Hey guys, Rich from Richmond Gaming. Hope everyone is doing fantastically well. Welcome to the second part of our setting up Marvel Crisis Protocol stroke TTS guide for the first time. Uh, let's jump straight over to TTS. And you can see where we left off last time is we created our roster. We saved that roster so we could use it for a future date. We picked our um, two crisis cards that we were going to play. And we had our characters selected and our tactics card selected ready for deployment. So how do we deploy our characters? Well, again, we could manually take these tokens and all these, these rules and put them out. Or we can go to this part. Of the map and just click uh, show deploy lines so turn on the deployment lines and then when we pick up a character this will automatically appear so all you need to do is one by one and in turn just deploy each of your characters now obviously in a normal game you would do this one after the other taking it in turn with your opponent so whoever won priority would deploy their character first and then whoever uh, didn't win priority would deploy second and then the one with priority then the one without priority and so on and so forth until you've deployed all of your characters so we have all of our characters deployed here so once everyone's deployed we turn off that deployment line button and we are then ready to play the game so what happens once we've deployed all of our characters well we enter into the power phase now once again we could manually go through and click each of these to add on a power it's using your left mouse to remove a power you use your uh, right mouse button it will just go up and down as such or we can jump to one of these three very handy buttons at the bottom of the screen and press automatic power phase. And look, there we go, guys. That is going to give us an automatic power for every single character. Now, it's intelligent enough to know uh, if you're an Asgardian, for example, it's going to give you two power. If you're Magneto and you've got two constructs out, it's going to give you three power in total. If you're Hulk, you generate more power, so on and so forth. The one thing it doesn't do is crisis cards so if you're holding a cube or if you're stood next to uh one of the the crisis that gives the extra power it's not going to do that so you need to make sure that you manually go in there and do that as well but really nice and easy so you press the automatic power phase button now we need to choose uh, a character to start playing with so let's say that we were to uh, going to activate star lord first so we've got all of these different tools here. Now, if I pick the uh, the medium move tool, which is what Star Lord is, I can put this here, and I can press the snap button. And that's going to snap that to Star Lord, and as you can see, when I move this, it sticks to him. However, I'm going to show you guys a couple of little shortcuts, and the way I'm going to do that is I'm just going to bring Groot to the front here, so you can see everything that I'm going to do with him. So. We have our number pad on our keyboard. Uh, now, this only works, I believe, on the number pad itself. So you will need to go in if you don't have a full keyboard. When I say a full keyboard, I mean the one that's the QWERTY one, but then with the, the number pad at the end. If you don't have a number pad, you'll need to go in and just change the buttons, basically, that, that do this. But um, starting off with number one, it's going to bring out a range one finder. And again, that attaches itself to whatever you're hovered over. So I'm hovered over Groot. Um, so it's going to attach a range one finder to him. I can then, uh, I can actually attach them to anything. So if I want to attach a range one finder to the hammer, I press this. But what it will automatically do is remove the range finder from Groot because in the game you're only allowed one of each type of measurement tool. So one measurement tool, one range finder on the table at any one time. There is one exception to that and I'll, and I'll show you how that works. Um, pressing zero will just move everything back to your tray. So one is a range one, two is a range two, three is a range three, four is a range four, and five is a range five. So really nice and simple there. Now, I want to do some movement, however. So we have a seven will bring out the short, eight is going to bring out the medium, and nine is going to bring out the long. Now, I can have more than one tool out at the same time, as I mentioned. So if I want the long with a range two, or let's say I want a short and a range two, 
because that's how far Groot can move. Because it may be that I have Rocket Raccoon here, okay? So Rocket Raccoon is here. So I'm going to put my Range 2 Finder on Rocket. So I want to move Groot over here, and I want to make sure that I'm staying within Range 2 of Groot. So I can make sure, sorry, Range 2 of Rocket. So I can get my Range 2 out here and make sure that when I move him, I'm going to be moving him and making sure that I'm in Range 2. Now, you just saw me move him manually there. If, however, we wanted Rocket to be able to move over this, let's say that he was already here, and we wanted Rocket to get around the building and get as far over as possible, this is a size 2, he's a size 1, so he cannot move over it. Now, you could just use the short movement tool, but he's only just going to clear that there, and we want to get him further up. So, we can use his normal movement tool, and then we're going to simply press the bend. It'll lock it in place, you can bend it to where you want, press lock, and then very simply, we right click on the place button, and it's going to automatically move him over to the full extent of the measurement tool. So really, really handy. We can also do something really nice with the range finders as well. So let's say that we have, uh, we have grouped and he has picked up a hammer, but he has unfortunately been dazed. So I want to then place this, uh, this, this celestial hammer within range two of, uh, of Groot. So I can simply place this where I want. So, okay, I want it there. Press that place two at the end, pick this up and then hover it over and you can see now I can no longer move that around. So that is now placed there. Press it and we know that that is within range two. So there's some really nice ease of life, uh, standard of living stuff on there with the measurement tools and the range finders. So one other thing that I found really useful and just speeds up the game is in the settings here on the uh, range finders and, and measurement tools. And it's that within range indicator. So if I press the on button there, now, if I'm playing Groot and Rocket, I want to make sure that I stay within range two of them. Now, if I hover this over, you can see it now highlights green. So we can see that he is well within range there. If, however, I move Rocket just outside of range and I do the same, we can see that it's highlighted there red and we are no longer in range. You can see his whole whole body there is uh, is highlighted red so we can see he's not in range it just makes it much much easier especially when you're sort of right up and really really close into it there and you can't quite tell am i in range am i not in range well there we go look we can see that we are in range Obviously, in Marvel Crisis Protocol, all of the terrain or most of the terrain is fully interactable. So you need to be able to remove those pieces of terrain from the board itself. Well, once again, this is really simple and straightforward. You could press the L button, which will unlock the terrain and you can actually move it around. However, there is always the worry that you actually hover over the map itself. And you can see there the map has become unlocked. Um, so I find it much easier to hover over. You can see there it says truck size four. That's another really nice thing. When you hover over any piece of terrain, it'll tell you the exact size of it. So you'll know whether a character can throw it or not, whether or how much damage it's going to do when it hits somebody. But simply right click and then press delete and it's going to get rid of that piece of terrain. Adding damage and power to characters is really, really simple and straightforward, as I showed earlier. Um, we simply just press the uh, left mouse button here, so it even tells you left click. So one, two, three, four, five power, and alas, Honey Badger is going to be day. So one, two, three, four, five. Now, a little tip here, guys, is once you're dazed, always make sure you put the dazed token on the top. Now, why do we do that? Well, when we end the round, you'll see during the automatic cleanup phase that it does some things automatically for us. And let's say that not only was she dear, she actually got a bleed token there as well. Now, everybody else has taken their turn. Nobody else has taken any damage. We've had a, a very, very lucky turn. So we're going to put all of our activated tokens on here. There we go. Last one on to Drax. And then we are going to 
um, press the automatic cleanup button. Now, what does the automatic cleanup button do? It does all of those things that you would do at the end of a round. So the one thing it doesn't do is add on your victory points. You need to work out those manually. But if we press automatic cleanup, it's going to move the token along and it's also going to remove those activator tokens. But we can see here that Honey Badger, aka Gabriel Kinney, has been automatically flipped to her injured side. So putting up that day token makes it really, really easy. If you do, however, forget to put that day token on, it's really simple and straightforward. All you need to do is just press that flip card button and there we go. Once we finished with using tactics cards, again, all we need to do is press the F button and that will flip them around, letting everybody know that they have been used. Again, if you do it accidentally, or you just need to read the wordage on there as well, you can flip them back around. And the little tip that is uh, in TTS is if you press the Alt button, the left Alt button, um, you can actually see the card much, much bigger on screen. That's easier for yourself. You don't have to sort of zoom in then like this every single time. And it's also much, much easier, especially if you're streaming, so that people watching your stream can see your game. Now, speaking of streaming, there is a really nice mod setting in here uh, that I'm going to show you in a second. So as you can see, guys, I have added in an opponent for us to play in this game, but we don't need to worry too much about that. So what is this really nice feature that we've got? Well, as we know, TTS is a great tool to be able to stream to people live on YouTube or Twitch or Facebook or wherever else you do your streaming. But one of the things that you don't get to see all of the time is what's happening with the game what's the state of the game what tactics cards have been used that sort of thing so if we go here into the mod settings we've got a couple of things that we can do in here um, i tend to keep everything as uh, a standard but the one thing that i do like to turn on especially when i'm streaming is the turn on streamer view so if we press this we can see here that um, it brings up a lovely little sort of overview so we can track how many points we're on. We can see what characters are out. We can see how much power they've got. Now, they will appear as KO'd if they're not on the board. So let's move these here as well. So we can see that everyone now comes on there. Uh, let's do an automatic power so everyone gets a little bit of power. We'll just have to add theirs on automatically. Put some damage on there you can see it automatically appears on here so everyone watching can keep a track of it all of the time it also shows any of the dice that have been rolled as well so if i roll these dice here for the blue player there we go it's going to pop up you can see the the the, uh, the dice that you've got there and again any tactics cards that are used it's going to turn them red so we can see the tactics cards here and then lastly is we've got our point trackers so we can see here that as we move the points up, I'm on six at the moment, my opponent's on three. That's something that very, very rarely happens in the game. And then once again, we've got the automatic cleanup, which will change everything for everyone. So guys, the last thing I want to show you is how we can resolve pushes and throws in this game. And once again, the guys have made it very, very easy. So in this scenario, Iron Man has done his Repulsor Blast. He's got the wild and he can now push Groot away. So how do we measure away? How do we make sure that we know we're pushing away? Well, you'll notice that I said earlier that there is one time where we can can have multiple tools on the board at once this is it and you'll also notice i missed out a number when i was going through uh, each of the shortcuts and that is the number six so the number six brings up the long movement tool but it is at a right angle so we can work out away and towards so what uh, what you need to do is uh, just get to a better position here so toggle this around okay and what you want to do is really line it up in such a way that it is directly running a line from the center of Iron Man's base all the way through to the center of Groot's base. So we can see that's done that there now. So we then need to take the tool that we uh, that we can use. So we can push short and away. Now you'll already notice that because we've got this tool out here, it stops us using the full 360 movement now. So we can only move it within the confines of 
uh, within the tool itself. But then we want to do one last thing, which is push and throw. So we need to choose, first of all, where we want to push and throw. Remember, we can't pre-measure these angles. We can't pick up Groot, move him, realize he doesn't get through the hole, and then go back. So we need to pre-select this. But we want to get Groot as far away as possible. So the way that we're going to do it is we're going to choose this angle here. We're then going to press the push throw. There we go. And now when we pick up Groot, he is stuck. No matter how far we move him, left and right, he is stuck to the center of this tool. So we push him all the way to the end and we can clearly see he's not going to collide with anything. So he can go right to the end of the tool. Let's push him back here for a second. Let's click done and let's try and move him over in this direction. So once again, we're gonna press the push and throw. But we can see here that we would actually collide. So because the shadow there would collide, that's where he will have to stop. So he would stop just there. And then again, we can press zero and take all of those tools away. So that's how we can use the tools for push and shove in the game. The last and by no means least thing that I want to show you guys is the dice roller itself. Because there is a, uh, there is a couple of little things here, a little couple of little uh, hints and tips here uh, that, uh, that will really, really help you. Uh, first of all, it's fairly straightforward. So uh, whatever number of dice it is you're rolling, whether it's attack, whether it's defense, you just add that number of dice in to the tray itself so let's say we're doing a a strike on group for example we get uh we get five five dice here so to roll them we simply press this button here now you can press it once uh, i i am a bit of a uh, firm believer that i like to press it more than once i like to give them a really good roll i don't think it makes a difference in tts uh, that was actually a worse roll uh so uh so yeah um but there we go. You can press them as many times as you want uh, to add more dice in. So let's say that we had, uh, let's say that we got a crit here, right? So I've got, I've got a crit here. I've just changed that to a crit. Um, I can add more dice in. It's very, very simply by pressing the add dice button. Roll these and it won't affect any of the dice up here. And that'll then take itself up to the top. So I've made my initial roll. I've exploded my crit. But let's say that I've, I may be holding a wing unit token. So I get to make two re-rolls. So to make my two re-rolls, I simply press on the dice that I want to re-roll. Once again, I could just drag them and drop them back, but I'm going to re-roll that. I'm going to re-roll this. And then once again, simply press those there. And you can see I'm, I'm about as good as rolling in demo videos as I am in normal games. So it shows you all the dice here. It also shows it up on the top here as well. So both your opponent and everyone watching can see the dice that you've rolled. And there we go, guys. That is my guide on how to use Tabletop Simulator for Marvel Crisis Protocol, but also how to set up a game of Marvel Crisis Protocol for the first time as well. Hopefully you found this sort of mini-series useful. I know a lot of you uh, have asked in the past sort of how to use TTS. It can be a bit scary at first when you first load things in there uh, but it is really really easy to use and once you play it a couple of times i'm sure you'll pick it up really really easily there are also hundreds and hundreds of other games that are on there as well so uh, any questions any comments uh, ask me down in the comment section below and i'll try and get back to you or reach out to me on discord there's a section on there for TTS, so you can ask any questions. I know lots of people on there that have been using TTS for many, many years and using this app for a long time as well. So plenty of people that will be able to help you with any of your questions. As always, guys, it leaves me with just enough time to say stay well, keep safe, and until next time, bye for now.